And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, we bring you a transcribed story of a man who used a gun once too often. So now, starring Mr. Joseph Kearns, here is tonight's suspense play, Hold Up. Staring at? Mine, Hazel. Open the cash register. Quick. Unlock the safety catch on the gun. Hear me? Tim, what's wrong? Never mind. Do what I say. Now get away from the counter. Quick. I'll take care of everything. I'd like a pack of cigarettes. Um, any special brand? Yeah, yeah, give me the ones with the green. Okay, stay where you are, you both. This is a holdup. I, uh, haven't got much Just give here. me what you got, and hurry. That a gun you got in your pocket? Just don't, don't you try and find out, mister. Okay. All my receipts are in here. Stand away. I'll get it. Yeah, you'll get it. Tim, please. Stay away from here. Tim, don't, can't you see he's already dead? He's over there, officer. What happened here, a shooting match? No. Five bullet holes all in the head. Oh, he tried to hold me up. What was I supposed to do? Where's his gun? In his pocket. Just pointed it through his jacket. The right pocket. No gun here. Maybe the left. Nope. I know he had something in his right pocket. This? A, a fountain pen. That's your gun. You ever see the boy before? No. First time I saw him was tonight. My husband saw the boy standing outside our store a few moments before it happened. Look, I'll handle this, Hazel. If you don't mind, I'd like to hear what your wife has to say. Well, Tim had a feeling something was wrong. We both saw the boy standing outside looking in at us. And then he decided to come in. That's when Tim told me to unlock the safety catch on the gun in the cash register. Mm. You've had experience with hold-up men before, haven't you, Mr. Chase? Twice. You people were in on them both. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Pretty rough on them, aren't you? If you mean I don't give them a chance to rob me, yeah. Good shot, too. You don't miss. I didn't miss over there. Shooting Japs, then. Shooting Hoods, now. What's the difference? Guy who shoots first gets to talk afterwards. How much money did you have on the premises? Fifteen dollars and change. The rest was over at the house. And you shoot it out for that? Listen, I'm not in business to give money to hoodlums, gun or no gun. A thief's a thief. Better off dead. Tim, please. No. I want it known to any of these punks who want to stick me up. They'd better come in shooting. Because that's the way I'll meet them. Did you notice if anyone was with the boy? No, no. I, I, I didn't see anyone. No, there was no one we could see. Mr. Chase, you'll have to come downtown and make a full report. Just routine. Yeah, yeah sure. Hazel, you close up when the cops are through here. Captain Runyon, this is Mr. Chase. Hold-up shooting on the east side. You wanted to see him? Oh, yeah. Definitely a hold-up attempt, although no gun was found on or near the hold-up man. Check the victim out yet? No, not yet. But it's a kid, 19 or 20. Thanks, Bill. I'll call you in a few minutes. Chase? 
Won't you sit down? Oh, yeah, sure. A cigarette? No, I don't smoke. Thanks, anyway. That's all right. Chase, we've uh, met before, haven't we? Yes, sir, about uh, eight months ago. Yeah, that was the Hendrix shooting, right? That's right. Hold up a hand. Well, about six or seven months before that, there was the... Uh, let's see. Oh. oh, yes, the Delano killing. Hold up, too. I remember. In each case, the hold-up man was shot and killed. So that's wrong? No. But I'd say very foolish. Look, they were trying to rob me. I killed them. What was I supposed to do? Just give them the money and wish them luck? Perhaps. What? For every hold-up man you've shot it out with, I can show you in our files a dozen dead heroes. They shot it out, too, but they were killed for their pains. <laughs> Not me, and I never will be, because I, I know how to use a gun. And I know those punks, too. They're all yellow when things are equal. I know. I've killed three of them. And I'll kill three more and three uh, more no, after that. Chase, listen, what I'm trying to say is this. Our job is to apprehend the bandit. It's not your job. You're not being paid to risk your life or shoot up your neighborhood. If there's any shooting needed, we'll do it. I, I don't get you, cops. A man shoots a bandit while defending his property, and, and then you, you give me a lecture. Uh, let me put it this way. Someday you'll find a gunman who'll be a little faster than you. Then what? <laughs> that day will never come. You know why? Because I know my guns. My wife thought I might be killed when I was in the Pacific, but I killed instead. Me and guns have got an understanding. Neither has failed the other yet. You're a very sure man, aren't you, Mr. Chase? Yeah, I try to be. If I'm not mistaken, you've got a boy almost that kid's age, haven't you? So? Well, I was just thinking out loud. The terrible price the young sometimes have to pay just for a living. Hey, look, Captain, I don't feel sorry. Do you? I didn't know the boy, I couldn't say. Except, like you, I have a boy almost his age, too. So. Captain Runyon. Hmm? Yes. It will be out in a moment. I'll have a statement to make then. The newsmen want to talk with you. Take some pictures, you mind? Oh, sure. Why not? Oh, yes, I forgot. We've, we've been all over the front pages together before. Twice, in fact. It makes you an old hand at meeting the press. <laughs> Maybe that's why these hoods keep trying to hold me up. It's a game. Yeah, they read about me. They all want to see if they can take me. Well, Mr. Chase, some might say that you should get a medal for shooting these hold-up men. Then, again, if it were me, I'd find me a business where I didn't need a cocked gun to ensure my profits. I manage. Yes, I guess you do. Are you ready? Sure. Gentlemen... Yeah. Oh, Gentlemen, let's make this a short session, will you? Sure, Cap. Uh, Mr. Chase, doesn't a gun pointed at you scare you? Huh. Oh, maybe at first, but if I have a gun, too, uh, I feel a little more equal. The fear's gone. Well, do you feel your money is more important than your life when you choose to shoot it out with a hold-up man? It's not a question of which is more important. I never worry. Handling a gun is a matter of re reflex. And when there's two of you facing each other... And who has the best aim? Well, have you ever thought of moving away from where you are because of your store being the target for so many holdups? Why should I? I've got a right to make a living because a man with a gun wants to take my living away from me. Should I just give it to him? Do you feel your service experience gives you this assurance you have with guns? Maybe. Well, when you see death all the time, it becomes less of a shock to you. Less important after a while. And so do people. Well, Captain here says a citizen shouldn't try to apprehend a gunman single-handed, but leave that job to the police. I don't have time to wait for the police. Besides, when a man's wrong, he's wrong. I'd rather have him dead wrong. <laughs> Gentlemen, if I may, I'd like to clarify the department's position. Oh, go ahead, Cap. Thank you. We ask all citizens that when faced with an armed holdup in which the other party has a deadly weapon, that they do not resist, but rather that they observe the party closely and be able to identify them when apprehended. Uh, Mr. Chase, could you tell us more about that? Uh, gentlemen, the entire incident is on report, as well as all statements made. You can get the rest of your story there. Y you can talk with Mr. Chase at his home or store if you wish to interview him further. Now, let let's have your pictures. Okay, now, Mr. Uh, Chase, will you stand here yeah, in the center of the desk? Right here, please. Look at the that's it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, one more. How about one more? Well, anything more on the kid? No, oh, he's in fingerprints now. Kind of gives you an odd sensation. Something you can't describe this. 
Meeting a killer with legal guns, that is. I get you, Cap. He's a cold one, all right. It's lousy. Man who has an excuse to kill like he does. Sure, he's defending his home, his rights, but somehow it's still wrong. Three in a row, all shots through the head. Not one bullet laid his way. Every homicide justifiable. What's the big book say? The wages of sin. Tim, you've been up all night. Why don't we close today? No, no, no. Business as usual. You ought to get a lot of new customers with all this in the papers. I only hope Jerry doesn't read it. You hope Jerry doesn't read about me, my own son? He should be proud. He will be proud. Dad's not afraid. Dad went through a war and he came back. He can still take care of himself. Jerry will be like me. He'll meet the world face to face. He won't take anything from anybody. I wonder. What's the matter with you? I'm sick of all this. The newspapers, people coming in congratulating you. For what? Oh, you're just upset, that's all. Tim, this is no good, all of this. Jerry's coming home from his first year at college, and he comes home to murder. Uh, Hazel, I don't like that kind of talk. Well, what do you call it? Well, he'd have shot me. All of them would have shot you, is that it? Hey, whose side are you on? Protect ourselves, yes, but you know that none of those people... Hazel, we're in business. I've got to protect that business. That's why I've always got a gun handy. Is it, Tim? Oh, Captain Run. Oh, Mr. Chase. How do you do, Mr. Chase? Fine, thank you. I'd like to have a little chat with you and the missus, if I might, Mr. Chase. Of course. I know that you've both been through a lot, but I feel this is important. We have very good reason to believe that the man shot here last night did have an accomplice. Oh, uh-huh. is that right? Yes. A brother. When did you find out? This morning. When we got back positive identification of the boy from Washington. Two and two still make four. He had a brother who was released from state's prison only last week. Hmm. What was his trope? Robbery and attempted murder. You people think that maybe he was outside last night? Yes. Yeah. A woman who lives a few doors down from your store said she saw a car pull out about the same time she heard gunshots. So maybe he ditched his brother and doesn't want any part of us. Maybe. Maybe not. We're not paid to act on assumptions, but to always presume the worst. We're going to place a stakeout near your store for the next few nights. What if I don't want the police around my store? I don't understand. It's bad for business. I can take care of myself. That isn't the object, Mr. Chase. Our job is to catch this fellow. And if you have to be a decoy, we'd like to protect you and your wife as well as catch our man. Oh, this guy doesn't want any part of You're me. You're presuming a lot, Mr. Chase. This man is a killer, too. Though I don't like to say this, he may try to avenge his brother. If I were you, I'd treat every stranger who came into my store for the next few days as the man who might not just want to rob you, but perhaps to kill you. <laughs> Listening to Hold Up, tonight's presentation on radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. A double barreled dramatic treat is Gunsmoke. Written with style and acted with a flourish, every drama on Gunsmoke is one that adults will enjoy. For the adventures of United States Marshal Matt Dillon, are stories about people who might have been real. Every Saturday, every Sunday, hitch your wagon to the star's address and let us take you back to the early days in Dodge City and set you down right smack in the middle of an exciting situation on Gunsmoke. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Joseph Kearns, starring in tonight's production, Hold Up. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Tim, why 
why don't we close up the store until the police catch this fellow they're looking for? Oh, don't be silly. Cops always look for the worst. The kid was probably alone. So some old lady up the block hears a car pull out just as I shoot. So that means we have to start running? Oh, just the same. I don't like this. Oh, Hazel, why don't you quit worrying and start getting things ready for Jerry? He'll be home in a day or two. You read his letter. <laughs> oh, yes, you're right. It'll be good to have him home. Forget all that's happened. He's doing so fine at school. It's hard to believe he's in college. Well, it's not hard for me, what with all the bills. Oh, Tia. I don't begrudge him his schooling, Hazel. It's just that I hope maybe he'd have stayed home a year or two to help me with the store. Well, now, your schooling's more important. Yeah, 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 maybe so. You know, Tim, I, I can't help but think. That boy the other night, he was just Jerry's age. He was nowhere like Jerry. He was a thief, a hoodlum. He's going to rob us. Yes, I know, but maybe there were many reasons why. Hazel, didn't I tell you forget it? Look, check the beer. I think we're running low. I have to put in an order tomorrow. And then go on home for the rest of the night. I'll close up. No, I'm staying. Oh, now you're being silly. Well, silly or not, I'm staying. It's been practically the whole day now, and it's getting late. Nothing's happened since the captain was here. Nothing is going to happen. Tim, you remember what he said about every customer. Look, if we start closing our doors in the face of every customer because some policeman thinks he might be out to kill me, we might as well close up for good. Tim, this isn't a matter to shrug off. We... Evening. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, can I help you? If you can't find out what you want, just... Uh... Just ask. I will. Oh, uh, those are real good apples. Hood River apples. We do have wonderful apples. Uh, you know the Hood River apples? Yes, ma'am. Looks like we're going to have a storm. And it's been so nice all uh, week. Uh, Hazel, why don't you phone... Do you have any pomegranates? Uh, I think so, over in the corner by the vegetable racks. Hazel, I was asking, why didn't you uh, phone the depot to see what trains are doing tonight? Maybe Jerry will be in earlier than we think. Would you mind waiting a minute or two before you get on that telephone? I'd like some help here. Oh, I can help you, sir. Hazel, you go on and make the call. Both of you run this store? Yeah, yeah. Then why don't both of you help me? Well, yeah, yeah, of course. I don't know what I want exactly. I just moved into a place near here, and I was thinking of stocking up a food supply. Oh. We'll be glad to help you. I'm surprised you people are still open for business. So soon after what happened. <laughs> well, business as usual, you know. No, I don't. I guess those things happen to a lot of people. Besides, the police are pretty efficient. So are you. By what the papers say. It was unfortunate. For the kid... Yeah. We're going to close very soon now, sir, if I can help you. You can. How about you and your wife picking out a lot of canned goods for me? Anything you think a bachelor might need to set up housekeeping. This is all new to me. Oh, I'd be glad to. I'll just take a moment to make this call, and, and then I'll be with you, dear. I thought you said you were in a hurry to close. Picking out all the things I want might take some time. Why don't you... Uh, have your wife call later, huh? Uh, Hazel, come on and help me with this gentleman. All right. Thanks. How much is your coffee? In the ground coffee, sir? I don't care. A uh, dollar three a pound. Okay. Now, you pick up, like I say, what a person needs to keep eating a week. Hazel, you better take care of the butter and milk, and I'll handle the canned goods, you folks have got a nice little store here. We like it. Maybe that's why you don't like people sticking you up, I guess, huh? <laughs> How about beans and corned beef and some tuna? Sure. All right, uh, two of each be enough? Yeah. Excuse my curiosity, but what did this kid say that held you up the other night? Why, why I don't remember exactly. If a person held me up, I'd sure remember everything that happened. I'd always remember. 
Did this kid show you his gun? Thought you read about it in the papers. I did. Sometimes I forget details. I never met a man who'd stand up to a man. I mean, a kid. With a gun who was about to hold him up. I do remember the papers saying the only shots fired were yours. Clean through the head. Real clean, too. Will there be anything else, sir? Yeah. How about some of those apples you folks were talking about a little while ago? I'll get them, Tim. Okay. You want all your groceries in boxes or shopping bags? Boxes. All right. Have a car to carry all this stuff? Yeah. Down the street a ways. I'll help you. No. I can manage. Well, now, let's see. That comes to... Uh... paper said you only had $15 in your cash register when that kid held you up. <laughs> You'll have a lot more after you finish with my bill, huh? There, that'll be uh, $23.44. All righty. Hazel, you can get ready to close up after this gentleman leaves. Right after I called here. We're expecting our son home from college any day now. We thought he might be coming sooner than he said. You know, boys, always anxious. Yeah. That kid the other night was anxious, too. But he got over it quick, didn't he? Hello? Oh, Captain Runyon. What? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Captain Runyon, you there? I'm sorry for the interruption. I was just finishing up with a customer. Can I help you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what time? No sooner? Oh, oh, nothing. Okay, thanks, Captain. What do you want, Tim? He just called to say that a team of detectives are being assigned from midnight on. Around our house, too. Damn. <laughs> Didn't I tell you about not worrying? That man that just left, he worried me. Yeah, he's a queer one, all right. But like I said, we just can't be jumping every time a customer comes in the door. Besides, tomorrow we'll all feel less jumpy. Well, I'll call the depot now. No, no, never mind. Now, Jerry won't be coming home with a storm coming up. Come well, on, let's close up. Tim. Hmm? There's a car pulled up on the other side of the street. They turned their lights off. So what? Probably someone who lives around here. Why would they stop outside the store? Oh, now you're just... They're just sitting in the car. They aren't going to get out. Well, would you in all this rain? They... They just keep looking over here. Huh? What... What do you mean, they? It's only one person. I don't like it, Tim. It doesn't look right. Hey, quit your worrying, will you? I wish we wouldn't have been so independent when the captain offered us protection. No one's going to bother us. I still haven't forgotten how to shoot. Tim. Tim, I'll call the police. Tim, come out. Now, don't be silly. Tim. He's getting out of the car. He's crossing the street. He's coming here. All right, Hazel, turn out the lights. Now, you throw the latch on the door. We're closed, that's all. I'll get the gun out of the register. Tim, he's coming to the door. Let me call the police, please. No, no, no. I'll handle this. Hey, open up. Shut up. Stay there. Tim, no. No. Okay, you can call the police now. Is he? 
Uh, I don't know. Tim? Tim, turn him over. Why? Turn him over. I, I want to see his face. Jerry. Jerry. Oh, he must have got that car he was telling us about. I didn't know. I didn't expect him tonight. I didn't know. Joseph Kern starred in tonight's presentation of Hold Up. Next week, we bring you a story of flight to freedom and how it ended. It is called Security Agent. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed in Hollywood by Anthony Ellis. Tonight's script was written for Suspense by Jules Maitland. The music was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Featured in the cast were Alice Backus, Leonard Weinrib, Shepard Menken, Larry Thor, Byron Kane, Frank Kirstel, and Sam Edwards. The foot soldier in the fight for justice anywhere is the man on the beat. But in a big city, a policeman has many other responsibilities in addition to the big one of maintaining law and order. For no matter what the situation, the man in blue is likely to be the first one called when help is needed. Is a neighbor too noisy, a customer abusive, a woman ill, or a little boy lost? No matter what the reason, someone is sure to call the police. And in each call the men of the precinct answer, there is sure to be an intensely human story. For drama as rich in emotion as it is in excitement and action, listen for 21st Precinct every Thursday night. Don't miss it tomorrow over most of these same stations. Stay tuned for five minutes of CBS News to be followed over most of these same stations by My Son Jeep.